what do you what do you sort of see with uh, with progression in uh, in the season? So I mean, with the with the elite guys, you progress throughout the season. You obviously build up in terms of volume. You probably change the focus, change the type of training. Do you do much of that with swimmers? Uh, your more <clears throat> everyday swimmer. Um, no, I don't actually, to be quite honest. Um, I mean, the the periodization that we used to use was was uh, quite complex with mm. with uh, Olympic level swimmers, and um, we I would generally put out quite a uh, a convoluted season plan, which would I would adjust from season to season depending on success or not, um, and try new things. Um, what I work with with my mainly my adult squad swimmers now is um it's because of the constraints of the time that they're coming in we what we're doing at the moment is running three uh one and a quarter hour sessions a week they're all morning squads uh so it's generally a monday wednesday friday um and because of the recovery factor uh, after, you know, you, you've generally got a, a Tuesday to recover and you're ready to come back on a Wednesday. Um, it'll be slightly different. Um, I do do certain things with periodization through the season uh, where we do p potentially a little bit more technical work uh, and then building up towards their their main competition phases will do a little bit more um, distance work but because it's really only three one and a quarter hour sessions a week I try and add some technique work some a little bit of aerobic work and some speed work to all of those sessions uh, and I just think that that's just good training it keeps people sharp neuro neurologically if they're doing some speed work um, I like to try and do um, technical stuff with speed because I believe that if you're if you're training a technique uh, and trying to um, consolidate it into habit, um, one of the best ways of being able to do that is through shorter distances of speed um, and without with without putting yourself under too much duress. Um, and so that you've actually got enough time to rest and recover and repeat the, the patterns that you're trying to change in your technique. So we'll, we'll regularly do some speed work. We'll regularly do some aerobic training. Um, I always try and make my sessions interesting and varied by putting in some drills and some little bit of pull work or band only swimming um, and, uh, and try and get them kicking this, you know, the, the, that is one of the differences I do notice uh, between elite swimmers and the general adult swimmers is the kicking ability is not nearly as good. So we do try and uh, encourage a little bit of kick work and, and focusing on, on the drive that the kick can create to help the, uh, the power of the stroke generally. It doesn't necessarily have to be the... The propulsion from the kick, but a, but a, a you know a nice strong kick with good timing can help the the purchase that the feet get to help um, initiate the body roll and 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 the power generated through the hips and shoulders. So um, yeah, I, I guess in coming back to your original question, there's not a whole lot of periodization which I'm currently working with. But that's mainly uh, for, based around the system and the amount of time that I'm working with these athletes. Uh, you know, as opposed to working with someone uh, for the whole year when you're doing two hours a day of pool work and uh, two hours in the morning and two hours at night, um, there has to really be a whole lot of thought on how much recovery you've got, what your microcycles are like through the week, what your mesocycles are like through the season, um, and even your macrocycles look, looking long-term, building up to Olympics and, and areas like that. 